Hello and a very warm welcome to this video about the new Search XT uh, synthesizer version 110 that was released two days ago. And I want to highlight some of the new and many features that were brought to us, but let's get started. So this is the search synthesizer you all know. And uh, still the most uh, underrated synthesizer I know. Everybody knows him, but <laughs> not so many use, use this synthesizer, but it's so powerful <laughs> and it's free. And um, okay, so this is the new version of the synthesizer and uh, with the version 110. And uh, yeah, the, the changelog is, is so big, so I thought I'd do an update to my um, series of search synthesizer. I think I did it in German language, but if there's enough interest and uh, you like to have it, I would um, repeat that series in English. Just let me know in the comments down below. So, and uh, one of the features that were requested in this synthesizer is something like uh, undo and redo, because um, the synthesizer didn't have really an undo and redo, but now it has an undo and redo. So if you just change something and want to undo it, you have to press Control Z to um, undo it, Control Z or Control Y to redo it and Control Z to undo it again. <clears throat> so this is one of the new features. Then this plugin is brought uh, to us as a CLAP plugin, as a VST3 plugin and as a LV2 plugin. So CLAP is the hottest shit around the corner right now. <laughs> and um, I hope this will be uh, soon um, the industry standard because I already did a, a video um, explaining what CLAP is it, uh, what CLAP it uh, is all about. And um, this is uh, really interesting and exciting. And VST3, you know all, um, and uh, LV2 is another open source plugin standard um, that is as well very important. The synthesizer is available for uh, Linux, for Windows, and also for um, Apple. And um, with this um, new version, there is also a new thing where you can define your own shortcuts. And uh, the shortcut is um, is uh, used with Control B. You get the shortcut editor, and there you see which shortcuts you can define yourself, or just uh, have a look which shortcuts are already um, taken or defined, like this. Some very useful sh shortcuts. If you do something and it's wrong, it just can reset everything over there. So Control B gets you to the shortcuts. Then with the um, with the patch browser, there are some nice things right now. So you can just uh, um, browse the uh, patches. There's many, many, many patches. I don't know. There are like two thousand or over three thousand patches in here, and really great, um, great stuff. And um, now you can search in a different way uh, through the patch browser or preset browser. You just click over here or just press Control F and then you start typing. And when you start typing, you see already um, the results over here coming down. You can go down with the uh, arrow keys up and down. And if you press Enter, it changes to that preset. So you, you can try out everything. Oops, uh, pardon me. Like that. And if you decide to uh, take this preset, you just press um, Control and Enter. And then the search field closes and you can start using this preset, for example. 
So, and uh, you already saw over here the um, the wavetable and the window oscillator has now um, a 3D view. You can change this if you like to have, if you want to have the uh, 2D display again. So you have everything you want here, and, but most of the time you can just click over here or right click to switch to the other display. But this is really nice um, if you if you're more used to some more visual feedback, this is really, really um, great. So, and then um, this is the, the old skin of the uh, search synthesizer, but there are different skins. There are, I think, two, two skins in uh, built in here, or one skin, no, two skins built in here, and you can, but you can download other skins from the um, search uh, web page. I will put the link down below in the description. And you can change this. I already installed it. You can download the zip files and just throw the zip files on the, on the plugin window, and then it gets installed. So you have here um, Classic Deluxe, for example, then Modern Dark, like this one. Then Modern Dark Blue, this is my favorite right now. Then the Royal XT. Then the Search Classic, we already see. So the Search Dark, this was a long time my favorite. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So this is actually my favorite because it looks so clean and yeah, I don't know, just like it. Okay. Um, then you have something, for example, like the um, the modulation list window where that you can um, open over here, for example, and then you can tear out this window. Oops, like this. And right now you can freeze it or just uh, so that it doesn't appear, uh, disappear when you click somewhere else. And you can resize it as well, like make it a little bit smaller and you can put it on, an, on another screen or over here or wherever you want to. And if you resize the whole window, and, but you need the original size again to just uh, to double click on it and it has the original size again. And for sure you could you can uh, close that as, as well again. So I don't know why it just opens on the other side of the screen, but okay, let's try again. No, it comes over here. <laughs> Very strange. Okay, so then I didn't know, I, I can't test that. Um, there was uh, some work uh, ongoing so that um, the search synthesizer is available as well or usable as well um, for touch screen. So if you are owner of a touch screen, you can use it with your touch screen. It would be very interesting if you own a touch screen, just write me in the comments if you do, if it's good, or how you feel about that, or you like it more to just use the mouse or something. That would be, be very interesting. Then, um, Every time you're on on something on a on a on an area on a knob or something uh, where you want to know uh, what's happening here what, or what is it about, you can always uh, often just press um, the right mouse button and then there is a, a question mark and when you uh, hit the mouse, it opens your browser and uh, opens the the manual that is very slow right now because my internet is very slow right now and it opens uh, the browser uh, with the manual most of the time on that position where you clicked on and something similar should work with the F1 button I just clicked on that knob and I'm landing in filter, filter controls as well okay so, and um, there were other um, optimizations regarding screen readers because there are um, as well people using synthesizer that can hardly see or are blind. So um, 
you need to have some uh, um, um, some things to, you have to care about when um, developing such software and uh, this is a really great um, signal because um, a lot of software doesn't really um, care about um, um, accessibility so um, re regarding of just people that that I can hardly see for example or that are blind um, there should be more emphasis on such on such uh, um, area because this is everything about user experience not only for um, for people um, with problems with the eyes or something just for other people as well I, for example i always have had uh, problems with uh, seeing sometimes uh, these light gray on darker gray or dar dark gray on, on lighter gray um, areas so always wanted to have an, an option where I can say okay I can't see it and I'm okay maybe then it's, that it look, looks ugly so I have to I want to have black lines for example so I can see them because they should help me and sometimes um, on um, on some software uh, it's, it's no help I know they are there and I can hardly see them but uh, it's really no help so I can it's um, it's completely uh, waste for me if they if they are there or not or something so I'm very happy that um, the um, search team uh, put an emphasis on that and uh, on the whole topic of accessibility and it would be very interesting too to know if you are using such um, I don't know screen reader. I'm I'm really not um, an expert on that, but um, I'm very interested in that because that's the area I I don't have any experience or I don't know people who are doing that. So if you are, I I would be very happy about a comment. Okay, the next thing I want to emphasize is uh, something that is in between the filter and you can you can um, create here or just you uh, select an, a low pass filter for example uh, between filter one and between filter two there is this icon did we get an help text no but this um, icon is the filter analysis so if I use now this low pass filter you see you have a visual feedback about that and and an audible feedback as well maybe let's try it and try that before filter one and filter two i don't know if we can if we can use them at the same time I don't think so, but um, you you have a visual feedback on how you can how you configure your filter, and as well, this window you can just drag and drop somewhere and maximizes, for example, and then it goes to the other screen. Very strange. <laughs> Go outside and stick it over here. Now stick it like that, so and then you can just leave it somewhere on the screen, or put it over back, uh, back over here again. Then there is on the key tracking high pass filter over here in the middle. There is a new um, slope of 48 dB slope. If you right click on here, you have here the 48 dB slope. This was uh, described in the in the big change log, and I was uh, searching for it, <laughs> didn't find it in the first in the first place. But um, this is over here the uh, 48 dB slope for the key tracking. Um, then there is um, on the mono play mode. There's something that is called uh, retrigger. If you right click over here. You can re-trigger uh, re the envelope in mono mode with reset to zero, so it starts from the beginning of the envelope again. Or if you if you are changing the notes, it just continues to to the current level. So this is a very important uh, setting for uh, mono patches. Okay, then let's go over to the. Um,
effect section. So it just takes some effects over here, maybe just a delay, something basic over here. So in, in former um, versions, the delay, you deactivate delay with right clicking on it. But with right clicking, you get now the selection menu. If you double click it on it, you activate it and deactivate um, this plugin or this, yeah, this plugin. And um, this is a little bit uh, different from the former um, versions you should um, uh, know. Then there were, for example, for the delay, there is on the feedback, I think it's on the feedback, there are some um, clipping options. If you right click on the delays feedback over here, so you can um, select uh, disable, you shouldn't do that. Soft clipping, um, then soft clipping with another algorithm. Hard clipping at zero dBFS or hard clipping about 18, uh, plus 18 dBFS, for example. So, and uh, for sure there are already an update to the whole, where is it? Can't find it for the whole um, Air Windows um, plugins. There are as well lots of different effect plugins where you can completely geek out. Additionally, additionally to all the other plugins over here. Then there is a special topic where I want to. Um, um, produce another tutorial about about it and there's something with the delay for example with the feedback because uh, normally you have a feedback from uh, zero to hundred percent but you can right click on the feedback and extend the range and then the feedback goes from zero to 100 and from zero to minus 100 so negative feedback but um, I will um, create another tutorial about negative feedbacks on delays. I was um, talking and asking because I, I wasn't aware about um, those uh, negative feedback delays. And I was talking about some, some guys on, on uh, the sequencer, um, the German sequencer, the uh, forum. And um, because I wanted to uh, have a good example how you can hear that very easily, because some of effects or some descriptions are very easy to understand, but Sometimes um, if you try it out, there's no difference when you try it. So you always have to have the right example when uh, using such things. Okay, and the next one is in the modulation section. And this is uh, really cool because, um, for example, over here, if you just take an, uh, a voice LFO, but this is as well for the scene LFOs. So normally you use this LFO, um, for example, for the pitch, and then you modulate it, um, the pitch, and then you click it or uh, de-click it or use the top key to activate or deactivate the modulation. So, and now the thing is, you can um, use this, or the, the LFOs have three different um, options to output or the parameters have three dip different options to use the three um, outputs of the LFO. <laughs> let, me just, uh, let me show you. So the, um, the um, LFO consists of uh, amplitude, frequency and an LFO envelope generator. And normally when you, when you did that, you could just like I did with a pitch, um, you modulated that and then you could use all of this. For example, if I use now the amplitude like this, maybe I use another with a control um, arrow, you can use the next. Uh, maybe I need I need an organ or something. Maybe this is cool. Okay, uh, with a control arrow you can select the next patch and with shift arrow you get in the next uh, category. So here you see the category keys and this is the patch. So if I use like a shift uh, arrow left, I get in the FX, shift arrow right, I get back in the artificial, not on the same, not on the same, um, 
patch, but I hope I get I get the organ back again. House organ. Yeah, this was the organ. So um, right now there's a lot of use of this organ. Okay, if I use the pitch for example and use for example an attack on this so you can hear it starts slowly maybe this is too slow just use like uh, three or four seconds So this is the the amount of modulation um, you can um, put on this LFO. So you have the normal LFO rate, phase, deform, something like that. Then the amplitude itself, like this one. Um, then here are the different LFOs as well. And then you have the LFO EG. And, and normally um, everything the whole output, the whole um, configuration you did here in this um, LFO was uh, brought to, for example, the pitch, the parameter you wanted to modulate. So, But now you can um, switch this, um, where is it, LFO 5, you can switch this LFO that it just that it uh, does what it what it's what it has done all the time, like outputting everything. You can just output the the waveform like this, so the um, LFO EG is ignored. I always click on the hamburger menu over here, or you just use the LFO EG, so there is no waveform, no um, amplitude, no rate, no nothing. So this would be the um, configuration from the modulator side. So everything what I now uh, modulate just gets what I've defined over here. So just take everything again and on the pitch for example if I right click over here I could say okay wait I just delete why is this window over here wait just put it like that and open it here again no it just opens always on the wrong side and um, where is it uh, voice lfo5 this is my voice lfo i delete the pitch close it again okay so now i have configured the lfo5 for outputting everything not just part of it and activating it and now um, i'm modulating this and normally this everything would be modulated but i right click on the pitch add modulation item voice lfo lfo5 and just you use the envelope only so now i say 12 semitones for example but now uh wait i modulated both right now that was my mistake i'm sorry i hope one time this window will just open over here so now you see there is a voice lfo uh, 5 with everything and the voice lfo with just uh, envelope generator i delete the first one and now you hear these um the uh, ascent of the um, attack is transferred to the pitch. Not over here, because this is a different oscillator, I think so. I could just put another one, add modulation, voice LFO, LFO5 and just EG only and I put 24 semitones. I try to put 24 semitones. Okay, too much, 12 semitones. Now it's more obvious. So I can use one LFO 
and, and can use the different outputs of the LFO. So everything of the LFO, just the LFO envelope generator or just the waveform itself. This is really great because um, you have um, at, at least, or you could use uh, even more LFOs um, than, there are, than there are really like uh, six um, voice LFOs and six scene LFOs. And you could uh, use a combination out of six, uh, at uh, 12 uh, multiplied with three, for example. I hope I'm right. <laughs> okay. Then um, there's another thing with the step sequencer, and there is another. Let me let me watch for it. Another deform slider. So if you use um, on this one, you could right click on it. Wait on the deform. Sorry, on the deform, and use type one or type two. So if I'm using this right now and using type one, just watch this line. Then it looks like that. So it's a different, different uh, algorithm over here. Then there are several um, uh, changes with the uh, microtuning and um, a lot of uh, uh, search effect plugins. Um, everything is in the change look. Just have a look on that. Then. Um, a lot of changes and fixes like um, your favorite um, your favorite uh, patches or presets like with this heart uh, you can export them in a file that is named let me look at it uh, that is named uh, uh, with the ending uh, search fuff but at the end this is a csv file so uh, it's a, just a text file, so you can um, just uh, um, export and import uh, your favorites from one machine to the other. Okay, and as well, um, the presets or the, the content of the presets uh, was updated with uh, some um, fixes for the existing uh, patches, and there were some new um, updates, new patches from Quantum Try and um, a Lith and Exocat, for example. So that's that's a small part of the change log, but I wanted to emphasize some some points or put a put a spotlight spotlight on some points because I was searching for those and I thought maybe I ease up your life if I'm talking about that where they are and where you can find them. Or just have a have a listen to this video and say, okay, um, let let me hear what what's new in there and what's uh, what this guy finds interesting with the new features. So I hope you liked it, and if you could do me a favor, um, like this. because that helps the channel and me. And um, I always like if I get feedback from you and uh, where you tell me what you're doing with all this stuff I'm talking about. Uh, maybe I do some, have some mistakes in my videos, just tell me um, because if there's a mistake in it and you put it in the comments, other people can read it as well. So uh, no mistakes are uh, distributed. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. I hope I see you in the next video um, soon again. See you, stay healthy, ciao, ciao.